Hey everybody, I'm Leonard Jacobs, Interim Executive Director of the Jamaica Center for Arts and Learning. I'd like to welcome you to Building Equity Through Art, Pulling from the Past to Shape Our Future. This is the culminating event of the first year of JCAL's Building Equity for Immigrant, Indigenous, and Native American Artists Program. It's a pilot project funded through New York Community Trust. And we would first like to thank the Trust for its very generous support of this program. It is a two-year program, so it will continue. In addition, I'd like to thank the Core Council. This is a group of nine artists and arts administrators who have conceived, developed, and produced all nine events that you're going to see during this festival. And most remarkably, um, they have done it in the midst of COVID, and they've done an amazing job and on behalf of all of us staff and board at JCAL, we really want to thank every member of the core council for their work and their perseverance. Last little bit of business. You may have noticed that JCAL is running a fundraiser. If you look just below, you can see a link. Uh, this fundraiser is to raise funds for our Black History Month programming coming up in February. Our interim artistic director, Courtney French, has programmed uh, February with seven events, I believe. If you click on the link, you can read more about them. Uh, we are more than halfway toward our goal. 100% of your donations go to the artists that are involved in these programs, not for admin. And we'd ask for your support. If you have any questions about anything, please always feel re uh, free to reach out to me directly. I'm at leonard at jcal.org. And now I'd like to pass it off to our interim artistic director, the visionary Mr. Courtney French. I'm Courtney French, Interim Artistic Director for the Jamaica Center for Arts and Learning. Welcome. Welcome to our presentation. We would like to thank you and your family for joining us today. Enjoy the program. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? I know you're sitting at home, you're drinking your hot cocoa, and you're feeling all warm. I am Queen Tut, one of your hosts for today, and I would like to welcome you and also thank you for coming here and joining us on YouTube. Can you believe it? We're doing amazing programming from Thursday all the way to Sunday. So if you missed the show, you can watch it on replay on J Cow's YouTube channel. And don't forget to come back. We have more events each day. So make sure you join us. Today, we're doing beating, a beating workshop with Vera Sola Vieva. And she is going to introduce indigenous beating techniques from Siberia. In this workshop, participants, students, you guys at home are going to learn how to make a beaded sun-shaped necklace with Vera, who also is originated from Saha Republic in Russia and she will make her own while you're doing it together. According to the indigenous Saka traditions, this type of necklace also doubles as a protective type of amulet because of its sun imagery. The sun is super important to the Saka people. During this program, Vera is going to discuss and also show some of the related rituals which were performed during a specific summer solstice celebration that took place in California in 2014. She will also explain some of the Saka traditional patterns and their sacred meanings. Did you ever think that fashion could meet culture and everything can come together so beautifully. So tune in and don't be afraid to go back and replay and replay and practice. Clear off your desk and let's make some beautiful jewelry. Tune in, let's go. Thank you Paige, you're awesome. Um, before starting our video, our, our workshop and pre-recorded video, I wanted to make a suggestion uh, to have two claws um, uh, felt bes uh, on the back side of your flying fabric and um, sew uh, beads and circle or your design together on these pieces. Now we are going to present our video. Please enjoy. Ben, uh, please uh, switch the video. Hello, my name is Vera Solovieva. I am native Siberian, a uh, Saha person, originally from uh, 
the Sakhar Republic of Yakutia that is located in the northeastern part of the Russian Federation. Today, uh, me and my guests, uh, Katya and Sam, will uh, present your bidding workshop. Today, we'll make uh, some necklace. It has a simple design that I especially choose for our bidding workshop for beginners. Before making uh, the, the necklace with the image of the sun, uh, I would like to show you a short movie where my daughter was a leading role, and that movie will tell about our traditions and our culture. This is a story about a little American girl, Katya, who flew halfway round the world to find her family's roots. She is eight years old, having been born in Fairfax, Virginia, where she lives with her parents and two older brothers. Her parents told her on one occasion that they were going to visit the place of their origins, Yakutia. Katya's dream was coming true as they landed in Yakutsk, the city where her parents had met each other and fell in love. Also, her grandparents and numerous cousins still live there. Her grandparents had been obviously preparing for the arrival of their American grandchildren for the whole day. Katya listened to her grandmother's stories and ate a Yakutian national dish of kwerchach for the first time in her life. Katya was aware of the timing of her trip. She had read her grandmother's letters about their ethnic holiday, Izyach, or Longest Day, celebrated by the Yakutians of our days according to their traditions. The government has decided that the holiday Longest Day has been recognized as the best holiday in Russia this year. The Yakutians of old called themselves the children of the sunny tribe Ai and worship the holy horse. And so, Isyach includes this prayerful ceremony. Yakutia is the largest region of the Russian Federation, and it is located in the northeastern part of Asia amidst snow, endless forests and mountains. The Republic of Sakha, Yakutia, is rich in natural resources such as gold and diamonds, which have become its symbols. Katya's grandmother gave one of her necklaces, explaining that silver is valued by the Yakutsk as a protector of young girls and young women from evil forces and sickness. Very good. <laughs> Historians found out that the Yakutians had blacksmiths for hundreds of years. Having studied the history of Yakutia, I have come to the conclusion that our legends contain detailed descriptions of blacksmiths' craft. It is possible that these skills were learned from the Altai or similar cultures by those people who settled the Yakutia area of today. Yakutian males are supposed to have good knives, hunting rifles, good horses and close families. Every man was considered a happy one if he had all that. Iron ore is first smelted and then cooled with cold water. The next step is to temper the iron by reheating it and cooling it from morning until night. You see, here, our molten iron. Look how beautiful it is. It looks like oil. This is a yellowish mass and it can be as hot as 1,500 degrees centigrade. Katerina Grace. Um, I live in Fairfax, Fairfax, Virginia, Washington, D Washington, D.C. I was born in Fair Oaks, 
Hospital, still in Virginia. People in my family are Mama, Papa, Tamusha, Sasha, me. Animals. So there's, I think there's, those are wild cows over there. And horses, wild horses over there. And so, and I think in America there are no wild cows, but maybe wild horses. In Kuti, I had a very, 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 very beautiful blue sky. A human being is surrounded by love from his birth until he dies. In my childhood, I grew up surrounded by the love of my parents, my grandparents, uncles and aunts. A child who grows up with love upon maturity values and loves similarly. Love is the basis of our life. A simple iron tongue of the Kamuz or Jew's harp can generate a noise something akin to signals from outer space. That is why anyone can join the global vibrations by playing this instrument. A Kamuz is a philosophical instrument and one of the artifacts of our culture. During the evenings, Katya walked throughout her grandparents' house. She glanced inside the rooms to see how her relatives lived. In one of the rooms, it was quiet and almost empty, yet it lured her to enter. An old cabinet attracted her attention, and a small instrument with a reed was left on top of it. Her grandfather was glad that she'd found it. He explained that it was called a komuz. He continues, saying that Yakutians have been playing it for centuries, imitating the sounds of nature, bird songs, and animal calls. The komuz is a small, handheld, vibrating instrument made of iron. It has neither keys nor strings, simply a reed. It generates a very rich and melodic sound. People have been playing an incredible number of songs and melodies imitating birds, singing and animal sounds for centuries. This last June, Yakutsk hosted the Maestros of the Jews' Harp from Germany, Switzerland, Italy, USA, Japan and various ethnic republics of Russia, including Yakutia. They took part in the seventh Congress of Komuz players. Each nation has its own style of Jews' harp. All play their own ethnic melodies as if carrying the audience back through time when humans and nature were far more closely related. On the 24th of June, when Yakutsk was waking up to the sound of Jews' harps, a flight from Moscow landed at its airport and an official of the Guinness Book of Records Claire Burgess, arrived to register the world record of simultaneous Komuz playing. Various Komuz players from all corners of Yakutia, of all ages, ethnic origins, and levels of playing skills, had gathered in the Sacha Circus building, the northernmost circus in the world. All present wore their ethnic costumes on the eve of the national Isiak holiday. More than 1,500 people gathered to play as an orchestra. Claire Burgess declared that the world record of the largest Komu's ensemble had been achieved. The public cheered, applauded, and after this event, 
She handed the official certificate of the Guinness Book of Records setting to the President of the Republic, Igor Borisov. The participants in the record attempt and success formed a large circle for the Asuokai dance performed during the celebrations. They danced towards the setting sun and sang. The sign of the Komus marked Yakutia in the summer of 2011. Musicians and Komus players discussed this event in the Northern Republic, sharing their impressions and setting new goals. James Cameron's Avatar was a very popular movie this year. One of the famous foreign guests visiting Yakutia mentioned that the philosophy of the movie's characters is very similar to those of the Yakutians. They share common values, they're closely tied to the earth and nature. It's very important to be able to preserve its own culture and develop further in a harmonic way. The movie offered fiction while we have a real life. That day, Katya had a very enjoyable day crammed with new impressions. She learned much about Yakutia. The land is inhabited by people who love and respect nature, who know how to work, know how to be happy, and that remember their own history. The Yakutian environment is fascinating, although it is harsh. The seasons of the year are unique there, and the river Liana flows ceaselessly on, remaining a witness to history. The land of Yakutia gives the world its diamonds, resembling the purest possible drops of water, and its iron, of which the Komus is made. The Komus can unite various countries, ethnicities, and languages. Why we choose for a beating workshop a sun, image of the sun? We choose image of the sun because it's, um, uh, we worship sun. And we uh, believe that sun is our highest, uh, highest, brightest uh, creator. And we call him Urung uh, Ayitangara. So it's mean, uh, highest, brightest uh, God, deity. Right. In June 2014, uh, during summer solstice, we, Saha uh, Diaspora in America, together with um, Gualala Art Center, Historical Museum Fort Ross, Gualala Point Park, and people from Saha Republic conducted a Saha traditional ritual that uh, worship sun, its name is You see how beautiful um, on this place, it's a Gualal original park where Saha Pilgita was made. And here are people from Saha uh, who are making rituals dedicated to sun. Now we are waiting of sun rising. And after sunrise, uh, we are dancing a traditional Saha circle dance of Wuhai. Yeah. 
so uh, now you know why I choose this shiny uh, circle that represents Sun because um, any silver any shiny metal uh, represent a protection in our culture all right so we need a circle uh, for the Sun and then we need a cloth that we should uh, sew and also we'll need a thread and needle and uh, we'll need beads some other beads that I chose uh, shiny uh, silverish beads and yellow because sun is yellow right but uh, we call it white and I also choose uh, blue beads because it's a uh, color of the sky if you want uh, you can choose of course different types of beads so here it's uh, again shiny copper beads and for decoration just like I also choose that yellow uh, glass beads too so what we're doing is that we're sewing the uh, silver circles onto the scraps of fabric to represent the sun and okay. it is supposed to be in the center. All right, good. Mm -hmm. Or as close to center as you can go. Yep. I can finish and then you, okay. you just, you know, uh, bring warm water and Entertain us, please. <laughs> Entertain you. You have to sew in a string of beads and as you go along you need to sew down the thread every couple of beads to anchor it and keep it straight and nice and even and you just repeat until you reach the end where you can do a full circle. All right, good. Um, historically in my homeland Rituals dedicated to Sun conducted in the special construction called Mahal Raha. 
unfortunately, uh, during uh, the Christianization and the following Soviet period, our ancient religion was forbidden, but not forgotten. Our people still worshipped sun and nature, but did the ritual secretly. Just recently, after collapse of the USSR, our summer solstice uh, festival uh, and rituals became very popular. Only last summer in 2020, with the help of American Museum of Natural History, our ancient sacred symbol Magoluraha was reconstructed in the Sahara Republic. After almost of 200 years for very first time. Masters from uh, Uran Studio uh, from the Republic of Saha, where director is Vyacheslav uh, Iroyev, came to American Museum of Natural History to study parts of Uraha uh, that were brought by Jesup North Pacific Expedition in the end of 19th century. They also studied uh, artifacts in other museums and in archaeological findings. Traditional masters from all over the Republic helped to decorate Mughal Raha. And here, in the short clip, you'll see the results of their beautiful work. Also, uh, Shenandoah is an American nature song. Oh, and the, oh, I know that West Virginia. Yeah, <laughs> Mountain Mama. Yeah, take me home, <laughs> country road to Shenandoah, where I know my ancient river. Oh, Shenandoah, my native valley, oh, come away, oh, come away, come away to oh, Shenandoah. It's nice. So, Katy finished her uh, silver circle around the yellow circle. It's very quality, good job. And then uh, from behind, you can see uh, two circles too. So now we can um, uh, should make um, um, beams, sun beams. So again, we just uh, pull through the fabric, use thread, and start to uh, make uh, strings of the beads from yellow or silver. You choose. Mm -hmm. When I was a little child, I remember my mom sitting at the table and uh, sewing clothes or making beads or making beading and she usually sang songs so I will sing a few
few words from this song because it's very nice and if it 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 brings me memories of my childhood Ürüm dolu gerem elbestir Man dolu gere dağlastır Iras dira ere pepperdür Doğuyum alır ere doğurum Ilbağaydır ere çiçeğim Doğ kapağız duvara göre Doğ kayar ere boğundu Doluktur ere doğru
this is actually very interesting design. Uh, two sunbeams uh, parallel to each other, and then you can put another uh, two uh, beams here and here and all around the circle. All right. However, as you see, uh, beams are very uh, wiggly, and um, actually, it's very difficult to make uh, straight uh, strings, uh, straight line from the beads if your uh, fabric is very thin like this. So it's important, uh, especially for the beginners, have some uh, felt or some other more thick fabric uh, behind this uh, thin cloth. Another design is uh, alternating uh, yellow and silverish string of beads to make uh, sunbeams. And as you see with the felt on the back side, um, the strings of the bead are much more straighter and finer. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Oh, if I did is to ride on a one horse open sleigh. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride a one-horse open sleigh. Here I just wanted to uh, tell you that uh, all our design they uh, actually have some meanings. And this uh, design cover, its name cover, made uh, your grandma, Abe, or my mom, uh, especially for our family. So this um, um the central part it symbolizes of um our family and here uh it's a uh, new families like uh, you know that uh, you will get uh, get married uh, your brothers will get married and this is symbolized of our uh, family how it's growing and um, uh, multiply, right? And here, this is a uh, um, some vegetation that's uh, beautifully flourishing. It symbolizes of the um, good well-being and harmonical life, and uh, a best um, your grandmother's. Uh, we wishing that we will live happily and wealthy life, all right, in prosperity, in family harmony. And here it's um, protection science, and this is kind of uh, roots that are uh, rooted in our ancestors. That it's rooted in our ancestors, that ancestors protect us, right? And then um, this is a white uh, form because it's a um, color of the oud. Do you know oud? It's like what? milk. Milk, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And here it's uh, a bear made, what do you think, what is that? Oh. Flower. It's not a flower, it's actually a strawberry. And it's not traditional, but because, you know, she really likes uh, strawberry and she um, uh, sang, sang the strawberry song when she was uh, seeing this uh, career uh, image. And then it's like a, it's a, a kind of a wall, protection wall, and we uh, live in the forest. You see? Mm -hmm. So this kind of image, it's a blessing to our family to live in a prosper and in harmony, in love and in happiness, all right? For example, uh, here, do you see uh, something familiar in this Linky Behe? It's in the, um, the plant, the bud, the flower. Yeah, so it's like, you see it's here, mm -hmm. a lot of cover, it's mean that like a good uh, wishing of the well-being and image of the sun. 
So it's not only just beautiful, but it has meaning, right? So uh, Sam finally finished his design. I think it's very beautiful. And now it's time to cut. Cut it down. To make it accurate and proper, we'll use cup. Please. And put it around so that to make a mark to show where we can cut the felt. Let's see. Right around there. All right. And now uh, we'll cut the felt, only felt. Okay, and I think it's like we need to cut a little bit more. But you know, like, uh, be careful not to cut the thread. Mm -hmm. And now we can cut our silky fabric and then just you know sew it on the back of the of our design all right mm -hmm. so we um Cut the silky fabric a little bit bigger than felt. So uh, after cutting, we will fold the silky fabric. Um, over the edge and then uh, we'll sew that fabric to the felt from the back side all right okay I finished my necklace uh, some necklace and I made here uh, tassels because it's uh, for a woman on the front side you see the design and the back side it's a little bit messy so to cover this mess, we just um, glue circle of other fabric. And I use just regular Elmas glue that we um, usually use for the school projects. Katusha is uh, finished too, and she is uh, doing uh, her strings of the beads. And uh, Sam, he already finished his design. And now um, we just you know wanted to cover back again with a circle of other fabric. And plus, because uh, Sam is man, he can use a simple simple um, string the same color of that uh, of this fabric that has the same color of the fabric all right <laughs> we finished our um, beading workshop for beginners and I just wanted to say that beading is not an easy task uh, 
especially for beginners. However, it's a very good opportunity for family and friends to gather together around the table and um, talk about something, share the news, and sing songs. So I hope you enjoy it, uh, this family event, especially before the Christmas. Thank you. I want to thank uh, Jamaica Center for Art and Learning, my amazing friends, very talented artists and cultural builders from the Building Equity Program, my dear friend Kate Paylor for bringing this a beautiful opportunity, and Sandra Harness, a director of the World Children's Choir, for teaching our daughter to sing. And special thanks to you for this workshop. I really appreciate your interest and support. Um, ben? Uh, um, Paige, I cannot hear you. I'm muted. Of course. <laughs> now we'll do it two times. Hello, Vera. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much for showing us some of your beautiful jewelry. Oh, my gosh. The viewers really were in for a treat. But I got some questions to ask you. So hopefully I can bother you a little bit. So we see that you're wearing such a beautiful traditional headdress and Katya, your daughter was in the video and she had a beautiful headdress on. So could you tell us a little bit about some of the accessory that you're wearing? Did you make that? Um, it's actually, this headdress uh, made was by traditional master from my Sahara Republic and it's a more traditional because it has uh, silver sun images. Mm -hmm. My daughter, um, she wore it, uh, this headdress that actually is more modern style, uh -huh. a more ethnic kind of style. Okay. And it was made by a beautiful sister of our famous um, ethnomusician, Liliana Krivashapkina. Awesome. It's yeah. gorgeous. And so... Do you make jewelry often with your family? Do you guys kind of come together and, you know, eat and sing? And that's what brings us together, the men, the women, the children. Do you guys often have, you know, jewelry making sessions? Uh, actually, back in my homeland, we did that all the time. We mm. cook together uh, food mm -hmm. preparing for the winter, like uh, the whole family gathered here. Uh, around the table, sing songs and just, you know, share stories. However, in this country, it's like a more, probably because it's more uh, easy life. Mm. You can buy everything from the store. It's like, it's it's a rare opportunity to gather together around the table. So, you know. Especially like, now during the times we miss coming together and making jewelry, but you know, yeah. people can tune back in and they can feel like they're making jewelry with you with this YouTube video. Okay. So we heard from the video that you showed in the beginning, the kamuz, the instrument that unifies, you know, your people that's made of iron and it imitates, you know, the nature and the animals. Are those the sounds that, you know, of your childhood? Were you used to hearing that all the time? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. How did you feel? Because you were in the video when they were breaking the Guinness World Record, right? No, it was not me. It was my daughter. Okay. So how did you feel to see nine it? years old. Oh, I feel I feel amazing, of course, because you know, like uh, I just amazed uh, of the talent of our people who can play hummus mm -hmm. because they can hear that uh, they can repeat after birds. And they just, you know, like a show of nature. You can see mm -hmm. it when you close your eyes. It was such a beautiful color. sound. I loved it. It's, it's mm -hmm. even me. I'm learning about something new, right? During mm -hmm. that summer solstice celebration, we saw all of the traditional dances that were in the circular formation that you were telling us about with the sun and the gods that you guys, you know, pray to. So where did you learn all of those songs and those chants? Were they passed down, you know, from when you were a child, from your parents? When did you get the time to learn all of these traditional songs? 
this traditional song actually it's passed uh, by um, from our ancestors, mm -hmm. and it's uh, usually leader of that awoha, that circle ritual dancing that he sing, for example, two words, and we have to repeat it. Ah, yeah. yeah. That's a little bit of what I need because I know I, I need to write it down maybe so I can remember. So we saw Katya, your daughter, we saw her singing so wonderfully in the video while you were beating. Now, let me say, did she get that from you or did she oh. get that from your husband? Who who gave her the singing she, goods? She got from Sandra Harnett. <laughs> she's a director of uh, World Children's uh, Choir and oh, wow. she's an amazing, amazing teacher. Awesome. Yeah, she's an amazing singer. Awesome. So one of my last questions before we begin to wrap it up, where did you learn to make such beautiful jewelry? Did you learn it? Was it passed down, you know, from your parents? How did you get to learn all of the different kinds of things that you can make? And also, are there jewelry pieces for men? Uh, yeah, it's like, um, it's actually our Saha people are very, very crafty. Mm. Like uh, every person can do something special. It's very interesting. And my, I learned that how to make jewelry, how to uh, make beadings, and just you know, like a uh, um, embroidering uh, from my mom. She's like I uh, was doing all the time, and I was from the, my childhood, was sitting and doing too. Mm, look, we have a friend. A friend wrote in a comment, Mr. Borrero. He asks, what kind of string is used for the man's necklace? It's any kind of string, any kind. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, we thank you so much for your beautiful artwork and also letting us know so much about your family. So where can people find you and maybe make jewelry with you or find out more about the Saka traditions? Where can we find you online? Uh, you can actually find me on Facebook, and me with my friends. We um, uh, now um, starting our website, Saha Diaspora. So it's a little bit later, not right now, but maybe probably. Guess what? Now is the perfect time to get your entrepreneur on and tighten up everything on the internet because that's what we're on all the time. Well, we thank you so much for showing us some of these awesome jewelry. They turned out beautifully. I know when I go home, I'm gonna put some things together and I'm gonna go to Michael's and have me a good old time. Is there anything that you want to tell the viewers, Vera, before we leave? I just would, uh, I want to say thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for everybody for your support and thank you Paige for your introducing and uh, um, asking, asking questions and you know, all other stuff. No problem. Everybody knows me and Vera. We're sisters on the council. So for those of you who don't know, we have more events going on today. So stay tuned and also some more events tomorrow. So Vera, we're going to say bye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> bye, bye. Love you. Respectful greetings. My name is Roberto Mucaro Borrero, and I'm the facilitator of JCAL's Building Equity Project. I trust you enjoyed the previous program, and I invite you to check out all the other exciting programs featured in our Building Equity Through Art, Pulling from the Past to Shape Our Future, multicultural event made possible by the New York Community Trust. All the Building Equity programs presented during this festival are dedicated to the memory of our dear departed colleague, Kevin Tarrant. You can learn more about Kevin and the Building Equity Project and Programs by visiting the JCAL website. While you're there, please consider supporting JCAL's Black History Month programs with a donation. Thank you and happy holidays.